All righty. Off we go. Take it away, Jim. Okay. So the first order of business is to approve the minutes from our last meeting, which was uh, May 25th. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make that motion. A second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Everybody is uh, all in favor. Okay. Good. The minutes have been approved. Um, we are going to go right to Aaron's um, agenda. Okay. I had thought I was going to do something, but uh, I'm going to hold off on that for now. Thanks so much, Jim. Uh, thanks so much for having me here. I know there's many of you um, I've met before. Uh, it looks like Brad is waiting to join us. There he is. Great. So again, thanks so much for having uh, me. So I'm Aaron Moore from Tie and Bond and I'm joined by Kyle Courtright, who's another engineer with me. And um, you will see primarily uh, Kyle and I quite a bit. We are going to be the folks who are um, leading this project. And of course, then there'll be uh, other staff members assisting us. So today um, I did email an agenda to everyone. I'm going to follow that and then, you know, put some graphics up on the screen uh, as appropriate when we get down to discussion items. Um, we, this is a good group. Everyone's got their names labeled. Is from a procedural standpoint, Jim, or is there any introductions or specific folks or anything you want to point out from your end as far as um, the committee or the team um, from the town's perspective? Um, sure. I mean, the committee members going from, I imagine we're all looking at the same grid. Stacy Mantles in the upper left. Paul Winters is in the upper right. Nathan Roy's in the middle. Leo's on the middle right. Brad is below um, Leo, and I am small down <laughs> here. Hi, don't know why. You're, you are not small to uh, in my screen, Jim. You're right dead. You're center oh, square. So <laughs> that's nice. Um, and then we are very uh, grateful to have both liaisons from the town board, Jim Morris and Damien Gutierrez. Um, so we're. Got a, John Stewart could not join us because he has to pick up a friend at the airport as we speak, as we are speaking. But everybody else is here. <clears throat> um, so I would say take it away. Great. Um, so I'm just going to, that covers our introductions. I'm just going to follow um, our agenda. So I'm just going to talk about what is our overall goal with this project. Um, the individual tasks and deliverables that will support that goal as we proceed forward. Um, the general work plan and schedule as we see it right now. And then I'm gonna go through some of the initial discussion topics that I, I think are first and foremost um, and important to get rolling on. Um, and as we go through, if there's any additional data we realize um, we need, um, we'll discuss that and then also you know, follow up with that later. So. So very succinctly, the project goals. So the goal is to craft a project that provides wastewater service to the parcels that really need it, that's cost effective. Uh, I think that's where um, all of our minds are and what's gotta be the most critical item is who needs it and how do we serve them cost effectively? And then consolidate that information uh, all the work we do into a report um, that is in uh, submitted to New York State DEC in the Environmental Facilities Group uh, Corporation, sorry, approved format. Um, and that format's very important because that's the only format which they'll accept engineering reports that are sufficient to qualify the town for additional grant funding. So um, we're going to make sure we're producing a document that meets all the needs of the EFC. And we can, uh, you know, talk about 
grant funding as we go through and, and what's you know the next steps with that. So the, the tasks and, and I'm going to quickly go through them, but we're going to talk about them more on the discussion topics. So sewer district needs analysis and delineation. You know, and I think that's a really critical thing that we can talk more about today. Developing the flows for that district. Um, looking at different collection and treatment system alternatives and how they might lay out to serve the selected parcels. And then again, consolidating that all into a, a report. So our deliverable at the end of this project is an engineering report, um, again, in that very important format so we can um, use it to move forward. Uh, generally, this is um, how the plan uh, and the work plan as far as schedule should go. We're kicking off today um, by uh, certainly by the end of November, but goal for November 15th. If we're going to do any on soil investigation uh, on site investigation to do that by November 15th. Um, we're going to be talking about a wastewater survey. Uh, one has been distributed in the past talking about uh, doing new survey and that time frame uh, from I don't we'll start talking about it in October, but we'd hope to have maybe the results back by December and there's a lot of flexibility there. We can talk about how to efficiently distribute that and what are some good opportunities to do that. Um, data review and alternatives analysis December through March meeting again with the town to review the alternatives we're proposing. Uh, preparation of the engineering report and then submission to New York State DEC uh, with a goal of that being in May. And so I'm certainly sorry, just submitting, going, submitting the engineering report in May by May. By May to the final report. So oh. um, and that's that's good from a grant funding standpoint. By the time any of these grants open, that means we'll have a completed, reviewed, accepted <laughs> report um, by the time we see additional grant opportunity. And of course, I'm presenting a conservative um, project schedule. The goal is to, you know, keep it moving and, um, you know, get everything completed as quickly as we can keep it going. So we have time to keep moving to the next step, but that schedule works well with grant funding opportunities. Okay, so I'm, I wanna talk about some of the, um, specific items and go through them with a little more detail. I'm going to throw a presentation up just to have some graphics in front of us. What do you think? You think I'm going to be allowed to share my screen? Let's see what happens um, and if you I can do that or to. not. Okay. All right. Nice. Great. Oh, no, no. I just hopped onto the other screen. <laughs> Hold on a second. You know what? Maybe I'll just go through it here. Um, PowerPoint always seems to have a mind on it, of its own. And as many times as I change the settings to don't do that, it still seems to like to do that. We we can see it great on our side. So. OK, I'm just going to stay here. This is uh, fine. So first task is sewer district delineation. I think this is one of our most critical tasks. and um something that as a committee we're going to talk a lot about so as you know or, or may recall we did have an opportunity to apply for a grant that funded this study in february and we were not successful we had a great um, debrief and then resubmitted this past it was due in early september um so I think that's pretty sure it's early September. I forget. Oh, the it was the end of July. When it was, to, oh yes, 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 yes. I'm thinking of the WIA that's coming up. Okay, so that is back in. So we have a good opportunity to um, qualify for that grant. We're not gonna know until December is typically um, when they tell us. Mm -hmm. So one thing um, in the idea that that grant is successful, and as we wrote this proposal, um, this is a piece of participation that the town can use as a match. Um, that's an 80-20% grant. So one of the pieces 
um, that was uh, the town's obligation to do is to su- su- to distribute a survey and to collect and organize the data results from that survey. Um, and that was one of the participation um, match uh, in, in services matches that um, allow us without the town, without putting actual money down to participate towards that 20%. So um, tomorrow or um, Friday, I'll send a draft to the committee of a sample survey that gets to the questions that we're looking for. Uh, that absolutely can be customized. Things can be added to it. Um, we can have a good discussion about the questions and if there's additional questions that should be asked. And I'll send that along with an Excel sheet that can be used for tracking results. Now, if there is a survey website that the towns used and are familiar with and you think folks will be comfortable using, we can include that. We could include you know, any method if um, you've tried to engage folks with questions before that's worked in the past, we can customize for that as long as we can get you know, the results back in an organized spreadsheet type manner. That's great for us. Um, but I'll be happy to uh, send a draft of that um, in a Word document, easy to edit, um, so we can, we can see what we're looking for. But obviously we're looking to get feedback on folks who think they have, um, who are aware of issues on their parcel. But also, this is a great moment to just reach out and engage the town to get awareness that this project is going on. So even if there's limited participation, um, and if a vast number of residents are, oh, not for me, um, you know, I have no issues, I don't have anything to contribute to this, that's great. You've still engaged folks. They know you're doing this work. Um, and it's a good heads up. Hey, the committee is active and revisiting the wastewater topic. So there's an advantage, even if, um, you know, a person who's not interested in it or has limited commentary to say. Any questions on this? So I'm going to move on to the district delineation. I do have one question, I think. Oh, sure. Um, and this would be if something for Damien or Jim. Do Does the town have a, some kind of online survey that's ever been done before? We do. We have uh, a survey tool um, that we actually used for the housing board survey. Um, right. It's easy to set up. Uh, we can make it publicly available on the homepage of our website. We can get a link, a QR code to direct people to it. A lot of different ways to to send it out. Uh, one of the challenges we had, Aaron, this is kind of a question for you, but one of the challenges we had with the uh, housing results that we got is we had sort of multiple submissions. We didn't gate the uh participants access to the survey by using like an email address or a phone number or some unique identifier that would only allow them to respond once so i'm not sure how critically important that is we could uh require that if we wanted to but just in past experience with surveys that's you know dropped participation pretty significantly yeah in this case we're very interested in their address because that relates to the parcel um, some, you know, there's a question on, do you ever have water in your basement? That just helps us identify areas with high groundwater. Um, and without being able to graphically sh- relate the answers to a parcel, um, certainly <clears throat> when we publish the data, meaning provide, say there's a good figure that results from it in the report, a parcel would be highlighted, you know, maybe parcels with high groundwater conditions, but a name wouldn't be associated with that. So um, maybe there's a good way to say, you know, that we're certainly going to keep an eye towards privacy, but knowing the parcel where the issues are are occurring is pretty important. So. So that's easily done. We could just ask for the person's address at the start, make it a required question to ask and then you can't move on unless you answer that question 
um, and it'll just be up to them to sort of answer honestly or with a real address or something. That's great. Yeah, if it, you know, there's no address associated with it, then that's really how we tally. So I'm not sure. Other than we would certainly accept the comments and understand the comments um, if we don't have a sense of where it came from, you know, it's only a limited value. So maybe there's a way to introduce that, you know, that the, the neighborhood you live in is really important for us understanding the results, you know. Um, that preamble is important. So I'll send some thoughts on that. And but that's a good thing, you know, for feedback back and forth, because I think the messaging is important. So this is the sewer district that was the last iteration from 2012. There is a hundred and I'm gonna pull this up. I think 28 parcels here. Um, this was developed by the previous wastewater committee in Dutchess County Water and Waste Water Authority. This is definitely something we really want to look at. Um, and understand, obviously we want the survey results, but also I think that there's some good judgment um, that may be reasonable to limit this area or consider um, what truly is a reasonable boundary. Uh, I think the Hamlet you know, area, it, I don't think it's actually terribly different when we flip back and forth, but it, yeah, the definitely this residential area seems to be left out of there. Right. Um, is there, I'd like to open discussion on, is there any thoughts on the district as it is, um, on preliminary thoughts of where we should be focusing this time on the district? Um, well, I can tell you that in our, um, in our interviews with business owners, okay, so we, what we, what we did before submitting the, the February grant was we um, interviewed pretty much everybody from the Fresh Town Plaza down to Fudgies on the Route 22 corridor and uh, Stone Resources. Did we get to Saravan, Stacy? I don't know if we ever got to Saravan, but we got to, to um, Pages and and Torco. Um, so that was. Those were the boundaries that we, I don't, wouldn't call them boundaries, but those were the, the business owners that we spoke to. And then we got all the addresses of residences in that grid. Does that, does that answer your question? So what I'm wondering about is if we start afresh here, I have all those letters, I believe, um, but I can, I'll, correspond back and forth. Why don't I highlight every parcel for which we have a letter and then make the area continuous, um, contiguous? So maybe we'll do color coding and I'll, I'll put one color for everyone we have a letter from and another color for everyone we don't, but that makes a consistent area. And then get that back to the committee and we can have just some exchange about it and identify as this where we think our starting point is. I have a question for everybody. Are we looking at this district as towards as far as the future and including Wasaic? At this point, we are not. Because they don't they have issues down there too? The same issues that we're the, the, having in the, town? The issue uh, with what? Yeah, they do. They do. Um, but um, in order to get things rolling. If, if we were to include Wasaic, we would have to have a whole nother separate treatment facility for Wasaic because the distance is too great from the hamlet. We could we couldn't uh, we couldn't situate the uh, wastewater treatment center in the middle. Possibly. The, the distance is just very, very great. And we've done this math before. Um, at the time, we looked at a few different parcel opportunities, and once we get too far out of the hamlet, the cost of just the transportation to that location becomes very excessive. 
And the goal here is to not do a traditional conventional wastewater system um, that's going to be expensive, uh, going to be far more cost prohibitive to operate that way. Okay. So it's truly two different studies. It's uh, It would be the same scope here focused on the Wasaic Hamlet. Okay, thank you. That can be done, um, obviously. And I think this is a good test case as far as this committee becoming familiar with the individual steps and parts of this. The exact same what? steps can be taken in the Wasaic Hamlet. So. The biggest complaint around town all the time is that Wasaic is the forgotten child of a medium. So I would definitely like for us to continue to think of Wasaic as we move forward with this. And I can assure you that we will. And I think also, I mean, this is, this is, I don't know if it's pie in the sky, but there have, we have begun very preliminary discussions um, about um, restarting the treatment plant at the DDSO. Um, so that is something that, you know, we move on to Wasaic. That'd be a great idea. So we're, we'll, you know, we're, we're going to keep our ears open about the progress with what's happening uh, with that area. And, and we'll jump on it as soon as we know what's going on. Stacy, do you want to say something? Yeah, uh, we were talk you were talking about Aaron uh, to start a map using uh, the people we got letters from, you know, like stone resources down to fudgies. The people I spoke to did not express to me their particular need on their parcel for um, uh, septic. They, they didn't voice that they had septic issues, but that wasn't even asked. I don't think, Jim, we uh, went any further than just getting letters of support. But we know, Anik, <clears throat> I wouldn't even say beyond Anik, we, we know that um, certain properties within the hamlet, i.e. Four Brothers, uh, yeah. where Monty's was, you know, they are definitely challenged and that's part of the reason that they were so supportive of our moving forward. I mean Stone Resources was at one end. Stone Resources and you know that's a whole nother thing because frankly they don't I don't think they have uh you know the need for for a whole lot of wastewater treatment system there. But um but you know that was just the start and and as we as Aaron knows better than anybody else you know, everybody, all the business owners were very supportive. So um, that's, I think, a, a starting point. Aaron, do you want to keep going? Yeah, um, I'm just, <clears throat> I, I think that sounds like a reasonable starting point to get a graphic back to you and that we can then look at that together and decide, okay, how do we feel about these parcels? What parcels do we feel good about? What where does more communication need to happen? Um, but getting that delineation, having that first pass at a delineation is really important to try to understand about how big of a service area are we looking at. No step beyond that can proceed. So right. uh, we can look at some parcels for if they're, and we'll get to that, but other than that, you'll see how this proceeds. We we need to know who are we planning on serving, um, right. like at least as a first pass. So that's right. really the first step here. Right. So once we have that, we're going to be asking for water usage. We won't ask for that data um, unless we get it for the entire town, um, if that's the easiest way. I don't know if coordinating with um, Antonio or um, who is doing your water operation is the best way to get that. But we will use water use data for the parcels that um, we're going to be focused on to, to understand uh, what the water flow is. And then um, certainly estimate any unoccupied structures, if there's past use or intended future use. And then also structures we know are not functioning up to their 
intended use, um, and additional future factors of safety. So we can have a current usage and then a safe estimate of a future usage. And I think that's uh, another topic where we can make some recommendations and then um, you know, have some good conversation with folks who are interested in being in the district and the committee's general impression on um, you know, areas they know that are not um, certainly being utilized to their fullest that we need to account for. So treatment system location. So this also, this is something that will proceed in tandem. So um, looking at a system location. So these are the parcels that were previously identified. Um, and I and these have these are from the old report, so we'll get our new addresses. I think you know all the last names other than uh, the town of Amenia parcels are probably um, you know have new new names associated with them. But this is a really important discussion because there's two alternatives for disposal: um, subsurface disposal, which means designing a system that the wastewater after it's fully treated is returned back into the earth, into the groundwater. And then as a disposal system that um, is discharges to surface water and will um, discharge to uh, a water body uh, stream in this case. So there's benefits to having a subsurface discharge and, and there's disadvantages. The benefits are there's less operation and maintenance and there's less treatment required. So the cost to treat the wastewater is lower. The operation and maintenance costs are lower. Um, and the effluent quality you're trying to obtain, you know, is um, easier to obtain. From a surface water discharge, the parcel size you need is much, 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 much smaller. And there's essentially unlimited capacity. If you needed to expand in the future, um, there's not gonna be a limitation on, on that uh, versus uh, for a subsurface disposal. You can only fit so much wastewater in a particular area and then there's no opportunity for more. So I, I think one of the biggest challenges at this point are you know, revisiting the parcels and identifying are there parcels we think are worth looking at, um, worth revisiting, and um, getting doing that may be potential for subsurface disposal. So sub sub or surface? Subsurface. Surface. Um, I think immediately uh well, you know, Jim Bull, Town Hall, I think, is a place that we really need to look carefully. As we know, there is a large portion of Town Hall's par parcel that is in the FEMA floodplain. And now current guidelines are the floodplain 100-year elevation plus three feet. So the 100 year elevation plus an additional three feet. <clears throat> so with the previous, I think I have that report up actually, might be able to pull it up, um, where the FEMA elevation is at the town hall parcel is quite large already. And then if we add three feet to it, you know, there might not be much left. Also, I believe you have now some structures in this area. Are we still looking at my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Just making sure. I there's, didn't a, there's a generator uh, roughly in that area where your cursor is now. Yeah. So, we'll. this is, again, uh, you know, our work is to update all these figures and get new data. Um, but definitely there is, you know, this 100-year flood zone is increased by an additional three foot of elevation. That's so, that's what the fringe is? That's the additional that, three feet? No, that was the previous. Um, now it's expanded and the fringe is expanded. 
So this is from 2012. The the guidance now has changed. So. So so the town hall is not an option then. It, it, it's definitely not an op option for subsurface. Uh huh. Um, I wouldn't completely at this point till I see where the lines set up. Say we can't fit something there, but um, if it involves fill, it could be very challenging. So. But it, but we could you we could install a surface system and discharge into the wetlands it, yeah into the into the stream yeah if we can find a place to put it but that again when we do this I, update I, yeah. it could be there could just not be much space left that would be considered usable so um i mean just going back into the you know general graphic as far as so for for a surface discharge, there's not um, you know we can work with a pretty small area. Certainly, the park is very challenging. There, it's very wet, and then alienation of parkland rules would apply, which require an act of state legislature. Uh, at this point, are there any other town-owned parcels we're aware of that are close, you know, in the center of the hamlet? What about where the uh, state garage and the sheriff's department are now? Is that Down here. by the county, I guess? Um, that certainly we looked at that was a pretty challenging parcel um, previously, but that I think there's a stream right there as well. But I think that absolutely should be considered. So. Um, Aaron, I actually got I actually got a call this morning from someone who um, has, it's sort of complicated, but basically the, the parcel above the Kornicki parcel there on your map. Formerly the Gregory parcel. Oh, well, no, it's not that, but it's, I thought it was. Maybe yeah, I think it's adjacent to the Gregory parcel. It, it's, right? I think it must be to the west, to left of of both the Kornicki and the oh, there and there is a bit of mode here, and we can just Google Earth it around here. So this we lose the parcel boundaries, but I think we could see from that um, previous that there is there the the parcel boundary is about if everyone can see my cursor yeah in this area, so there is um, some parcel up here that is associated with this overall um, more mountainous. I think I'd go as far as mountainous um, side of the parcel. I see. Is that so, so this is a kind of a crazy question, but he's on a very tight deadline. Is that something that you could look at in the next in the near very near future? Certainly, but right away, you know, it's it seems like this is a pretty small area. So granted, we're looking at, you know, reducing the area, but a substantial part of this parcel was required to be able to do subsurface disposal. I see. So it's, and even if we had both of these, which I'm not sure is if that's what the discussion is, just on face value, even if it was the exact same soils, it seems like it might be a bit challenging. And there's, um, there's no there's no water to to, to discharge from a surface setup. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay thank you. <clears throat> what about the Amenia Meadows parcel that's just to the south of the Fresh Town Plaza? Very wet. Oh, uh, we it? did look at that previously. Really covered with wetlands. I can find a graphic on that. I have a quick question. I want some clarification, please. Are we working towards a surface system or are we working for an underground system? Oh, we will take any option. So um, what What's the better option is the question? Well, I, I tried to give pros and cons of both. The pro with um, subsurface is there is less um, effluent quality required. 
So okay. it is a so it's a cheaper system to build. But are you restricted by capacity with that? But you're totally yes, restricted by capacity. Okay. If it's surf end, you need a large parcel. If it's surface discharge, we can we're going to have a higher quality effluent we need to produce. But you're not going to have um, a dis. You, you don't you don't have a set capacity. Um, okay. So the. And, you know, given the challenges, especially with the high groundwater. Yeah, me um, is terrible with high groundwater. Yeah, there's there's really limited parcels. So. Is, is Millerton going for the surface system? They were not able to purchase their parcel. They, the negotiation at this point, I think this is public knowledge, um, has f fallen. Um, wow, okay. So they are going with a surface discharge. But see, it seems to me that it's, I mean, that, and please, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that a surface system should, should not be ruled out because in, with a surface system, we can expand the district when, you know, right. which I, I think is oh, important. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, that's what, everything's on the table that we've, we've come prepared to look at both, both styles. Um, no matter what, it has to go somewhere. Yeah. So um, whether it's a smaller, several acres required um, at minimum to do subsurface disposal, or, you know, no matter what, wastewater systems, even as alternative style as we're discussing, you still want to do offsets. You don't want to be right in a residential neighborhood. Right. Um, so... Uh, I mean, in Meadows was um, assessed and at the time excluded because it was um, substantially, uh, there was a substantial area of wetlands. Now, certainly if we are not trying to do subsurface on it, but do um, more of a, uh, find a dry acceptable piece for citing a surface discharge, that um, that could be something well worth looking at. Yeah, we can sort of see, you know, just we can see that it's a wet parcel, just even kind of with some of the topography here. <laughs> but um, I would certainly keep that on the table, and what we'll do is is assess it for wetlands and topography. If there's a large enough high dry spot that's outside of wetland buffers, then that should absolutely be on the table. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a quick so, question. Go ahead. No, I just, stacy has got her hand up, so I wanted to give oh, her a sorry. chance to ask Sorry, Stacy. I have so many things on my screen right now. Um, <laughs> I'm not able to easily see everyone, so I, I forgive me. Uh, very quickly, because I looked at the old feasibility study and I don't know how much the technology has changed, at that time, I think five acres was necessary for one of these two systems. I wondered what the uh, qualifications of a parcel would be in terms of acreage. So the acreage depends on the quantity of wastewater. So fi that five acres is based on the flow at the time, which I think was about 40,000. So we, uh, we need to start at the beginning again. Yeah. I'll see if I'm right or not. Uh, 20,000 maybe. Um, and so some things to consider. Uh, so now we revisit, develop the new service area, develop the flows, and then we know how much space we need. Um, it also depends on the soils. So very tight soils um, need much more area to get rid of the flow than sandy soils. Um, so it it's to have a three to five acre parcel we're looking for for subsurface disposal. I think that's still the size of the parcel for subsurface we'd look at. Now for surface, that's that's a, a smaller parcel we can get away with certainly. Um, but again, we don't want to be in the middle of a, uh, you know, right in the middle of a residential neighborhood just because regardless of what this treatment system looks like. The DEC does expect offsets from property lines. 
Can can we on with the surface discharge? Can we locate that within, say, like a, a cow field or a horse field, or are they restricted from being able to have animals in that area? For surface or subsurface? For surface discharge. Oh no, that wouldn't. But we'd put a farm fence around the the treatment system itself, and that that would be no problem for well, surface. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying is because we have plenty of farmland in this area. Go to a farmer and say, hey, we just want to discharge into your cow field, so to speak. So now that's subsurface. That means the underground system. All right. right? That's where I, that, that's where if I'm there were a cow field, if there were a cow, cow field or a, a horse field near a stream, then yes, you could put a surface treatment plant in the middle of the of the field mm -hmm. as long as you could uh clean up the effluent and route it to a body of water that's okay. what the system is okay Thank but you. could cows graze on top of a subsurface system sure you can't till it so we couldn't put it under a cornfield you could hay it hmm. but okay. but but we couldn't tell it. All right. That might that might open up more properties that we have available to us. For sure. But I mean, going back to, oh yeah, abs absolutely. Um, you know, I think there can be th compatible uses with subsurface. Um, the area of the treatment system itself is probably a bit larger with. Uh, surface discharge because there's more treatment components needed. Um, do, I mean, does anything else strike anyone about any parcel we have or haven't looked at before? I think, oh, we quickly, I pulled this open, I think, to look at the highway garage. Highway garage would definitely be a subsurface type Why system. Where are we? Down here, right? Why am I not hearing anybody? Uh-oh, we hear you. Stacy. Stacy, you're muted. Stacy, you're Stacey, muted. Mute yourself, Stacy. I think we're in the process of moving that highway garage. If any of the liaisons can chime in, I don't know how far away the new garage is going to be from the present one. That, so what we're looking at here is the the county sheriff station and a county highway facility. Uh, the town highway garage is actually in the Hamlet of Wasaic, the current one. Oh, OK. All right. OK. Well, is we've this got what the, was the, is this what was intended, though, when the comment was? Yes, about? this, this, this okay. is the sheriff, the sheriff okay. station. So the yeah. county owns that sheriff parcel. Um, to just northeast of it, that other rectangle there, that's a nice egg substation. Yes. Uh, we probably can't mess with that. But the question I had for the group, if you slide over to basically directly to east, you'll see what looks like uh, the remnants of an old racetrack. Oh, yeah. That's, yes. that's part of the old Claire Michael, or that is currently owned by Claire Michael. That's part of the extremely large farm right across the road. Um, here, I'll, let me share my screen really fast because I've got parcel access. Uh, oh, great. So okay, I'm stopping sharing. There you go. You don't. You don't have. I only some. see you. Can you see my screen now? Now we can. Excellent. Okay. So this is old twenty two. This is um, uh, old twenty two. Continues down this way. So I'd be, I, you can't see my cursor, probably, right? Yeah, we can. Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, okay, great. So this little dingus over here is part of this massive farm. This is basically just schmoo. It's not, there's, I don't think they till it or farm it or whatever. Um, if we look at the wetlands, flood area, and terrain, we've got the fed in green blue is D new york state dec but there's this southern corner of it here that 
It seems like it's relatively dry. Wetland buffer. 100 feet. 100 feet? <laughs> mm-hmm. I still like it. I still think we should look at it, but the so you got the buffer, the boundary, then it's a hundred foot from the boundary you can't disturb. How much is a hundred foot on this map? It's far, huh? Uh, I would guess so. There is a measure tool. Hundred feet's a lot further than you think. That's a hundred seventy-six foot, what I just measured right there. Yeah. And I mean, what do we got from a wetland uh, from a water body perspective here? What's, where's our closest um, stream flowing water body? It would be the pond uh, the street, wouldn't it? Across 22. Yeah. Where is the creek come through? Oh, right here to the to the west of the sheriff station. There it is. Um, yeah, it's coming down there. What is this? This is the church. How about this lovely high spot to the south of the Route 22? Yeah. I don't know. Anybody know the Rasmans? This is McEnroe. Rail Trail? The town, town owns this, yeah. Rail Trail. And there's, I know, I see there's several structures on that, so. Yeah. Um, this is also the same Claire Michael um, over here. So this is the same as the parcel with the racetrack that we were looking at before. And this has a stream. Yeah, this is right across the street. Yeah. So well, that's all the way across 22. Well, I don't know. You think the county, I mean, Aaron, what do you think about this? I mean, this is the sheriff's substation. A, they're never there, so uh, maybe they're, but do you think that we've got enough room? It's 90 feet. It, it would be quite tight. It should be looked at, um, but what about the Amenia Gun Club? That uh, is, north of that. It's, this is, the Gun Club is south. We're getting pretty far away from the Hamlet Center here. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the furthest, and, and we start to get, you know, way, when we go, what were formerly the Sims and Culver properties, we start to now also um, really have a uphill climb it's it's perfectly feasible but it um, definitely is a um, you know quite an elevation change up to the top and you're also very close to your well so yeah well what i'd like to aaron what i'd like to try to figure out is is or um maybe a I mean, like, how do you how do you determine where you want to look? I guess is my question. So we'll come out with a boundary that's uh, reasonable based on the cost of um, transporting wastewater to that parcel, um, and then do two passes. Just one, definitely do a pass for wetlands with the offset and what do we have left and then look at any parcels um, also parcels known for high bedrock um, or high groundwater um, and do two approaches one is a parcel large enough to do a surface treatment facility and a parcel large enough for subsurface but it all goes back to that um, subsurface goes back to what is our service area and 
and right. knowing service areas so we can do the gallons per day expected from it. Right, 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 right. But we'll do we'll do absolutely uh, pass using those resources, show the parcels that are left, and then engage engage you all. Like, what do we think? Who knows the Claire's? The, is that the right last name for the racetrack? Um, and across the street, um, would they at least be willing to let us dig a hole? We'll fill in right away. So. Brad, you've got your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, a thought that was occurred to me is, what is the feasibility of having more than one sewage uh, treatment area on a smaller scale? It certainly depends on what the district looks like. Um, two, two treatment systems does obviously have additional capital. Um, at this point, I think we got to be open to whatever the possibilities are, and maybe it's not the treatment system. Maybe there's two disposal locations. Um, I think I think we need to do this analysis and get our list of parcels that are left that are not substantially impacted by wetlands. But to do subsurface disposal, we're going to need, you know, any parcel. I mean, I. Two acres or less is really a stretch to be I, able to do offsets from Aaron, property you, lines and whatnot. You guys might have covered this and or may have been covered in a prior study, but the lower parking lot at Town Hall is pretty low. Like it's sunk down maybe two, three foot from the actual road. Um, is there room there to put something and then you could just repave on top of it? And I mean, that, that's a very large parking lot. I don't know that that building that, that build behind that parking lot is saturated all spring. I used to coach baseball there every spring, and it's just that it, that's a, got a very high water table and across the street there. They're always getting their uh, basements are getting flooded. We have the, that's a high high water table right there. I don't think that would be a good idea. Paul, I dug test pits in it, and there was no point. <laughs> Is that you just took one shovel full and it was filled with water. Yeah, so it, it's extremely wet right there. I that I do know, just from coaching baseball. <laughs> so, so the the only thing I could see happening at Town Hall is a sub is a surface water disposal system. Um, the proximity to the wetlands and the floodplain, the height of the so so also to do subsurface disposal. We need to be four feet, four feet above the highest groundwater level with the lowest part of our distribution system. So the fill required to make anywhere almost on the town hall parcel work is substantial because as I saw that spring, the <laughs> groundwater was less than a foot underground. So to get that separation distance, you would need four feet of four, five feet of fill. Right. And so that's a for a very large area. So that's a pretty extensive cost. I, I honestly believe we're limited to the south side of town. That seems to be the driest area of our community. Um, anything going out towards Stone Resource, that's got that stream there. That's a really wet location. <laughs> but anything from the town hall, all, I'm all the way up past uh, Maple Brook. I have water every year in my backyard um, in the spring for two months. I have ducks. So I think we're, as we're worried about water level, I think we're really limited to the south side of the town. So, you know, a parcel that seemed to, you know, have some flexibility as well was the parcel on the other side of old route 22. Um, I'm not sure who, Culver? You know, it was Culver previously, yeah. And so I don't know if there's any option to discuss with them, but but I think what I'm going to recommend is let Kyle and I do a desktop analysis, identify the parcels where we know there's wetlands and um, high water elevations, get our 100-year flood, add the additional three feet, and let's see what we have left. And, and it sounds like you know, I think we're all understanding the general area we're probably going to end up looking in, but but let's let us do that work. Yeah. Get that back, and then let's reconvene and talk about who we should talk to or reach out to. Right. 
Stacy, I know I see you, but you are muted. If we hear about a property that is a potential property, do I speak to Jim or you? Because one of the board members thinks there's a property, uh, it's a commercial property on uh, 343 that uh, is possibly interested. So was it a nursery? No. Okay. A, I don't even know what kind of company it is. Okay. Great. Um, it's on the north side. I mean, I, let's. We should all talk about communication. I mean, I I certainly don't mind any of you reaching out to me directly, um, if that's in the in the format, especially during this parcel phase, because Kyle and I are going to want any and all suggestions or places to look. Um, the idea is to get more than one place, and also, if it's privately owned turn around to this committee and say, hey, who knows these guys? Could we just get permission to put a hole in the ground? Could we just walk around one day? Um, and that's going to be, you know, this whole group coordinating and figuring out how to get access for a brief period of time. So um, as much back and forth as we can get to try to get a list and then get on that parcel before it is, I, I hate to say it, but, you know, it's it almost, it's getting towards the end of October. Yeah. So before any white uh, stuff threatens to fall. Have, have we considered the, our, our drive-in, our movie drive-in? I mean, from an interest perspective, I I don't think it was previously considered. There, it's very hilly, but there's a huge, beautiful flat section, as we all know. Um, that's, bef that's in front of the screen. I don't think they're going to want to do that. <laughs> um, oh yeah cars park cars parking yeah just like you can't you can't pave over it either um right that's well, it extremely be, challenging it, it, it's it's not a, it's our driving is not paved it's just grass but it's it's the compression from the tires okay all right yeah maybe, maybe behind the screen i don't know is there is there still area that behind the screen? I, I don't think there's enough behind there uh, but anyway I, I do think that it makes sense for aaron and kyle to do what was just suggested and because it's you have the resources to identify you know what's wet what's not and i just the only th thing which is i think sort of obvious is that with climate change we have experienced climate change in amenia this summer in yeah. a very dramatic fashion and so uh things are crazy wetter streams are way higher i mean it's anyway, but I do agree that we have to get, have a field trip pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. So, I think so we'll Ida that. was a, oh, sorry, was, a 500, was a 500 year weather event, right? That's what they characterize Ida as. I don't know. I just know there was a series of of deluges. Um, Thunderstorms aren't what they used to be. They're a lot stronger than they were 20 years ago when I first started working around in or outside. They're extremely more, much more powerful. This has been some year. <laughs> can, I add, can I add something? Um, there were HG pages directly behind them is a separate two acre parcel um, with like a 50 foot access right to the highway. And that was kind of where I was going with this earlier about, you know, could you have more than one smaller site, you know, that holds certain, because you mentioned capacity is the issue. So if you had two sites that would, you know, give you the capacity versus one, and I don't know what's on that site right now, but it's a couple of acres, it's not wetland. Where's this at, Brad? Behind um, pages. Directly behind HG Page, HG Page owns. Oh yeah, that would be and nice. it's two acres, and there is a, according, I don't know if it's a wet, uh, wetlands, uh, it's a flood area. No, it's a wetland area, delineated going through it. I don't know what that is. Maybe there's a runoff stream. I don't know. But, but again, I think in the in the interest of moving this along, I think that we should let um, Aaron and Kyle. Yeah, I agree. Uh, do do their do their investigation, Stacy. 
Erin, have you ruled out a decentralized type of uh, system? I mean, I think we're all seeing that just finding a single parcel that might be even slightly big enough is being is very challenging. So I think let's put anything on the table that we can that's going to work um, for the service area um, from a parcel analysis standpoint. So no, nothing's off the table at this point, but right now there is no obvious parcel to investigate. That's anywhere near the service area. So we'll, we're going to get really creative, as creative as possible, but um, even when we talk about surface discharge, we could, as long as we're not in the floodway, we could be in the flood zone, but our building will need to be three feet above that. So the cost that that adds is, so just we, if we can find a parcel that doesn't flood, um, you know, that might be our, and that is open to the town or would be make pot, potentially reasonable to acquire. I think that's so that's where we've got to focus. We're, look, so. we're looking for five to 10 acres, correct? Uh, no, we could be looking for an acre if we're talking about a surface discharge. So again, if we're not trying to send it into the ground, our needs get much smaller. So we only need an acre for a surface discharge, but we can't have any water streams nearby. We, we can't be building in a wetland. Yep, we've got to be out of the floodplain. But we do need a stream nearby to discharge into. Exactly. We do, uh, we do need a stream nearby. Okay. To, to discharge to. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jim, do you want to? Is there anything that you want to cover? Uh, or Aaron, do you want to just run through the rest of your? Yep. Let me jump back into this. Um, yeah, I think we should just get back to the. But, but this is this is the topic. By all means, like well, we can be quick about everything else. Um, this this is going to be our challenge. So, um, and it's where I expected that we'd have the most discussion. So, uh, you know, we're we're going to be very focused on this and keep all of our attention on this. And we're going to figure out good parcels to look at. I'm very confident they exist. We just are all going to put our minds to it, and we're going to figure it out. So let me just go back to this. So that's the discuss. Uh, discussion. We're going to look at different collection system alternatives. Um, and of course, as we discussed already, the effluent limits for each potential disposal approach, they're going to dictate what kind of treatment system we need. So these were shown, but I just, again, um, this is what we're aiming for are these type of systems. This is the Hillsdale system. I think most of you have seen it. This is a subsurface disposal system. Um, this is what it looks like if anyone ever wants to visit it or hasn't visited it. This is a 35,000 gallon per day system. Um, this is a system in Hyde Park. It's Pinebrook. Um, it's actually using the same technology as Hillsdale. It's in the middle of this very tense, densely developed residential area. Um, this is a surface discharge system, but I think you can get an idea, right? Now we're surface. This is a tiny parcel. Um, backing up against what's there's exposed rock, if you can see, you know, right here in woods. So, you know, we, when we talk about doing, and there's a stream right here. Now it's a very, I think you can maybe tell really steep bank. So this parcel itself is not in any danger of flooding because the, the stream is way down here at the bottom of this bank. Um, so when, but when we talk about a surface discharge, all of a sudden the parcel size we need becomes much smaller. So this is a good example of that. Um, and this is another example just of, uh, this is a school system, uh, but in this case versus subsurface, everything's in this building. So the building, nice representation of a barn um, and it's you know very front and center on the school campus. So this is a surface discharge. So uh, not going subsurface. So these are, you know, this is what we're aiming for with the treatment system, not a conventional open tanks of wastewater system, regardless if we're discharging to a stream or discharging um, subsurface. Uh, what I don't have here is a picture of Silo Ridge. I can always, uh, you know, share that. They're in kind of box cars, uh, like a, um, a, a cargo uh, truck bed body. Um, 
the, Ship, the containers, cat, shipping containers. Shipping container, thanks. The feedback from that from the health department is that they permitted it in a private sense, but from a uh, standpoint of a municipal system, it's very, very tight in there. That technology is fine, but they'd be less, um, they'd be a little hesitant to approve such a tight space for a municipal, meaning it's very tight in that shipping container. Um, and, you know, they question exactly how efficiently the operator can work. But that's what uh, Silo Ridge has, was pre-manufactured units that were dropped off. So, uh, but that's what we're aiming for, these type of tr treatment systems. And again, just, uh, re you know, talking about the engineering evaluation report. The, the idea is... Now we have our service area, we know how much it's cost, develop user costs and understand what's the grant funding we're looking for. And then engage, go back and engage um, the town in a public meeting uh, and determine you know, what's our next steps from there. So that's in general our scope um, for this project. Going back to the agenda, um, immediate steps. So I think from a data perspective, I don't know, Kyle, and if you noticed anything, I don't think I have requests on any water data until we really know what parcels we're interested in, unless it's easy to just get all the town water data. And it'd be good to know who to reach out to to get. Is it, you know, the operator and is the operator still the same person? Um, I think it. Uh, that's a Jim Morris or a Damien question. I'm, it's... Um... You, you mentioned his name earlier. Uh, Marco. Marco. Marco yes. D'Antonio. Yep. Yes. Okay. So, so okay. He, he's still the point person. And okay. as far as I know, I think he could provide that information pretty easily. Uh, okay. correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Damien or Jim, but I think that's, you know, it's just he knows how much he's billing. He could just, you know, put it in some sort of spreadsheet, I would think. I would think he could. <clears throat> so Great. you should let me know, Aaron, if you want to, um, you know, how you want to reach out to him. I know how to get a hold of Marco as long as everyone's okay with me talking to Marco. Um, All right. Love it. So then um, I'll send you a draft survey uh, to the committee to talk about and look at and see um, if there's other questions. But it sounds like Damien has a great um, resource for how that might be best distributed in that data collection. Um, and so we can, with that, that can go out at any point. Um, we can continue to discuss that. And then, you know, a, a certainly item C, I don't think I'm giving enough credence to the next steps. So I'll, in, I'll send out meeting minutes and we'll be clearer there. But the first step is using the desktop and GIS analysis, Kyle and I will do a pass and we'll do two passes um, oriented towards parcels where we think we could do subsurface disposal, put the groundwater, put the wastewater, treated wastewater into the ground um, and parcels where we could build the treatment system, but then discharge to a stream and produce two different graphics. And then I think we're gonna want to have a discussion and see, um, what what parcels of these do we think are worth investigating? Um, and, and with the goal of if we want to do any soil condition evaluation that we, we want to do that before the end of November. Right, okay. So that's that's my agenda. Um, any Anything else to discuss? Um, any questions? I think everyone's got my email address. I think Kyle's was added to this list. Um, you certainly can just get me directly. I'll I'll make sure my team's getting the information we need. Anybody okay. else have, have any thoughts or questions before we end the meeting? I guess just one. Um, if if you if you take Route 22 and 343 intersection as you know the, the the basic starting place. How far can you reasonably go for a treatment center from that from that area? When we start approaching 
you know, a mile or three quarters of a mile, the cost of that pipe, especially along the state routes, it gets really expensive. Okay. Um, I, I had always had it in my head that we would build a, you know, a great spot for a town garage sewer treatment area would be where we used to have um, our town our town uh, uh, garbage dump at where we used to collect garbage at down on old route 22 yeah I always thought that, that would be a great location and it would be halfway in between Amenia and Wasaic and we could in the future serve Wasaic also who owns that now I, I'm not uh, sure I think it's a landscaping company. Um, that was the that was the parcel that was identified during the last uh, wastewater study we did, um, and that uh, you know that was that plan came together actually, but it failed at referendum. Is my recollection of how that I mean, went down. That that would be the spot because it would be. That's where that was going to be, Damien. That would be halfway between Wasaic and Amenia, and in the future yeah. we could we could serve Wasaic if that, you know from that location. That so, was my thought. The, I mean, Aaron, you correct me if I'm wrong. You've reviewed these old star Stacy. You've reviewed these in a lot of detail. But the uh, old mine um, that is currently has some composting activity going on. Just just at the southern border there was the site identified in the last wastewater study. Not not the last one, the previous one, the one that really almost happened. The one when Darlene right. was the head of the wastewater committee. That's right. That was, that's the one that that was going to be um, this, um, you know, a very very new way of treating the the sewage. Um, that's the the last one that went for, to referendum, right? Yes, the last one that went to referendum. I'm not sure why the 2012 never went beyond the feasibility study, but it didn't. So that would be there, kind of. Is right? this the parcel? Yeah, yeah, right around there. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a copy of that, but if Jim or whoever is best to resend me that, um, I know I've looked at it, but I want to make sure I've got the most recent version of that. Okay, because that that's within a mile of town. Yes, maybe a little more. It, at at this point, I think it's very reasonable to consider, um, because we we do have access without going down twenty two. So that's really important. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And this is the parcel we're discussing, correct? Yes. And the town owns this? No, okay. no, but it's 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 been for sale off and on, um, and I think the people that own it now would probably be willing to speak to the town. Okay. Do you know who that is, Paul? Um, I can't remember his name on I've had. I've met him a couple times. Um, they're, they're nice enough people. They're not. They're not. They wanted. They wanted the mine there again. Remember that? And it, it got shot down. So they had to just use use it as uh, doing the compost processing. So they're not really using it for what they intended to use it for in the first place. Hmm. Okay, that's very interesting. Cool. Okay. All right, I have to run shortly. I'm sorry. All right. Well, this has been, I think, terrific. I really appreciate everybody's participation and. Um, uh, Aaron, are you going to generate minutes and send them to me? Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. OK, so that would be terrific. I will compare that to the recording. Damien, are you going to send me the recording somehow? Yeah, actually, so this system will generate a transcript automatically, and that satisfies our need to provide a transcript for remote meetings uh, per the executive order. So it's automatic like magic. And where does it go? To to us to you, it will Anybody. go. To, oh, it goes to all the members. Anyone can download the transcript from the video. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. All right. We'll, we'll be more succinct. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks Great. very much. Let's uh, stay in touch. We have a lot to do in uh, not much time. <laughs> Sounds like. Thank you.
Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great, Thank great you, contribution. Thank you. So, okay, good night, everybody. You. Good night, everybody. Take Thank care. You. Bye. Bye bye.